it was kind of a difficult choice trying to decide whether or not to share uh, this information with uh, my family here on the internet and I don't know exactly what will come of this or how this information will be received there's a difference between a shaman and a sorcerer some people say that the shaman uses his knowledge to benefit the community and the sorcerer uses the, his knowledge for himself yeah, two paths here yeah but there's a bigger there's a bigger issue um, that comes up in my in my understanding of the situation and that is um, there's another there's another qualification for uh, a shaman in order to be a shaman um, that person has to be accepted by the community the the uh, the, the person who <laughs> who provides information that is never used and um, you know gives gives knowledge to uh, his community or her community um, can't expect uh, to be uh, you know uh, effective if that community rejects the, uh, the, the what would be the learning or the teaching and so the, the the question begs you know from my perspective you know how effective would it be for uh, for me to try to uh, be uh, this sort of aid or guide for uh, the community at large Very foggy today. Very foggy. Something really amazing happened on October 14th and I wanted to try to explain my perspective on this and I'm reminded of the position of Richard Dawkins who when paraphrasing and extending the ideas of JDS Haldane supposes that the universe may be more mysterious and more complex than we can imagine um, and can be imagined. So in other words, the complexity of the nature of nature is beyond the grasp of the human being. And I tend to agree with this uh, uh, to a great extent, but I have hope. And in the uh, words of Terence McKenna, if the truth can be said as to be understood, it will be believed. And I believe it's these processes of coming to higher and higher understandings of nature of the world that actually drives and enables human evolution.
most of the past four years, I've spent studying the relationship between the earth and the heavens. And the journey it's taken me on has been very remarkable, incredibly profound in uh, its scope. And the most interesting thing it seems about the heavens is our nearest star, the sun. If you can imagine the sun coming up over a hill in the prehistoric dawn, it's easy to understand how a very large sunspot might have been mistaken for a cow uh, grazing in a distant pasture. And the Egyptians have a god known as Hathor. And Hathor is a cow that carries uh, the sun on his head. The character is often depicted as coming up from uh, behind a mountain. And um, the eye of Hathor, Hathor's eye, is the eye of Ra. The cow became their term for that phenomenon. And this is the source of the holy cow in the ancient Hindu tradition. The cow is not the animal, the cow. The cow represents this higher order understanding of the nature of the uh, continuity of consciousness, the connection among the rishis of the Vedas that that is manifest through this higher order, higher frequency energy form that appears black to the human eye, to the human visual eye, but that shines through to the eye of the mind, to the mind's eye, that entangles the minds of the past and the future to the minds of the present.